I am the victim and the attacker has convinced me in one way or another to click on this link and once I click on it we will get a login web page that looks exactly like the original Instagram login page. That's one of the reasons why this attack is so effective as the victim would simply think this is a legit web page and they would possibly even enter their credentials in here. Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'll be showing you behind the scenes of how hackers send phishing links to capture the victim's password and username and on any website really. Instagram, Facebook, and or any custom website. This video is made for educational purposes only and ultimately it's used to protect yourself or your organization from these types of phishing attacks. And I will show you how to do that, how to protect yourself from these types of attacks at the end of this video. So feel free to skip to that section of this video to learn more about that. As always, your support means a lot to me. So if you like this video and you want more cool videos like this one, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Let's dive into the video. So I have my Kali Linux up and running in here. Let's open up the Firefox browser and I also have the Pipe Fisher tool opened in here as well. I will include the GitHub link for this tool in the video description below. Now PyFisher is essentially a tool that hackers can utilize to carry out phishing attacks with the ultimate goal of stealing sensitive information. This includes uh, social media credentials such as username and passwords. Now we will be using this tool to take a behind the scenes look at how this can be accomplished. So first let's download the tool to our machine and you can always check the documentation and the uses of this tool by scrolling down the document in here. So to download it, let's click on the green code button in here, select HTTPS and hit the copy icon to copy it. Now we have copied this link. I will head to my terminal and let me minimize this browser, make this bigger. And I want to download the tool into my tools folder. So I will do CD tools to navigate to my folder called tools. And in here I will do git clone and paste the GitHub link in here. So basically all we're doing here is cloning this repository into our local machine. Hit enter to clone it. And now the tool has been cloned into our local machine. I will do ls to confirm that. And as you can see we have the pyfisher folder listed in here. I will do cd into that folder. And always hit tab to autocomplete. Hit enter. And let's do ls in here as well to see the files that are inside this folder. And we can see that we have a file called pyfisher.py and this is the executable file that will run the tool. And to run this file or any file that ends with .py, we can run it by using python3 followed by the file name which is pyfisher.py. So I'll do python3 and the file name which is pyfisher.py. I'm gonna hit tab to autocomplete the name for me. So we're basically saying we want to run this Python file using Python version 3. Hit enter. If it's your first time downloading the tool, it will take some time to download the needed repositories. So give it some time to do that. And once it's done, it will ask us if we have a local X authentication token. Just say no thank you by typing N and hit enter. And awesome, as you can see, we have a list of 77 website templates that we could use. We can also use our own custom web page from here as well. All of these templates are mimicking real login pages from real websites such as Instagram.com, uh, Gmail, Microsoft, uh, Facebook and so on. So when a victim sees that fake web page, they would not notice any major difference compared to the real website. This will ultimately lead them to log in into that fake login page. And we will see how the login page looks like in a second. For this video, I will select the Instagram template. So I'll do the number five and hit enter. I do not want a one-time password page, so I will say no thank you. I will skip the shadow URL as well as we don't need that for now. For the redirection URL, let's put in the real website which is Instagram.com. This will basically redirect the victim to any website that we want. 
So it doesn't have to be Instagram.com. You can put any website that you want to redirect the victim traffic to after they hit the login button. Let's hit enter. Let's give the tool some time to initialize the servers for us. And it might ask you for SSH authentication. So just say yes if that shows up. And great, here we have the links that we could use and send to the victim. But before we do that, let's make the URL look a bit more realistic because the URL currently has nothing to do with the Instagram.com. So it's actually asking us if we want to try a custom link in here. And I will say yes, please. So I will do Y and hit enter. For the domain name, I will do Instagram.com since we are using an Instagram template. And for the bait word, I would do profile, hit enter. And perfect, we now have a link that looks much better than the other ones. And by the way, you could use different bait words and different custom domain names as well. So it doesn't have to be Instagram.com or profile. So here we have the link and we are actually ready to send this link to the victim. So I will copy this link like so and copy it from the side here to make sure we get the whole URL. And once we have this link, hackers usually send this link either using another Instagram account, an email, or even a text message. So social engineering is very important prior to delivering this link because hackers would basically study what you like and to pretend to be that thing that you like. And all of this is done to increase the chances of the victim clicking that link and entering their credentials. Since this is a video for educational purposes only, I will simply paste it in my browser as if I was the victim themselves. So I will go to my Mac machine. This will act as the victim machine. I will open up a browser and I will paste the link in here. So let's pretend that I am the victim and the attacker has convinced me in one way or another to click on this link. And once I click on it, we will get a login web page that looks exactly like the original Instagram login page. That's one of the reasons why this attack is so effective as the victim would simply think this is a legit web page and they would possibly even enter their credentials in here. But even if the victim does not enter their username and password, the attackers will get some information about the device, the, about the victim device, as soon as the victim clicks on that link. So if we go back to the attacker machine, we can see that we have captured some basic information such as the victim IP address, operating system type, browser version, and even geolocation coordinates. This might not be the most accurate geolocation, but it will be very close to the victim location actually. I actually have another video on how to capture the exact location of the device. So if you want to see how that can be done, please check that video out as well. Let's go back to the login page and let's pretend that the victim would enter their username and password in here. So for the username, I will do Sako zero and for the password I will do Sako one two three four five six and once we hit on login we should be redirected to the real Instagram.com website and as you can see we got redirected but if we go back to the attacker machine we can see that we captured the username and password which is Sako zero and the password is Sako one two three four five six these credentials will be stored in a file called creds.txt in which we can access later on if we wanted. You have seen how simple it was to make that fake login page and capture the victim's username and password. Now the question is, how can we proactively defend against these kinds of phishing attacks? Well, the first thing that we have to look at is user awareness. This involves checking the URL carefully to ensure that it's the correct one, especially looking at the domain name. We should also check the person who sent the link to ensure that they haven't been hacked and make sure the message itself is from someone you recognize and not a stranger. Ensure that you use unique passwords for each account. This way, if a phishing attack was actually successful, the attacker won't be able to reuse the password to access your other accounts. This will reduce the potential damage happening on your information. Lastly, ensure that you use multi-factor authentication or MFA. So enable it whenever possible. 
This will add another extra layer of security by requiring either a code or another authentication method in addition to your password, even if the password is compromised. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and learned how to protect yourself from these types of phishing attacks. They can be easily generated, but if we implement the correct security measures, we can easily evade them. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.